In this video, we're going to go through how to do an electronic enclosure. This is something that I've made before, again, designed in Fusion. Um, but I want to have one that's uh, parametric, so I can just go in and change it, move it around, and make it to whatever size I need. I've done several of them for the my MPCNC for enclosures to put uh, electronic stuff in. So that's basically what it's for. If you make this one, you'll be able to um, just change the sizes to where you want it to be and the box should be good ready for 3d printing so i've created a sketch of where i want the dimensions to be for this box we're going to create it using a spreadsheet we're going to put the dimensions directly in the spreadsheet so that we'll have a fully parametric box to start with then we're in the part design uh, workbench and i'm just going to show you so i Somebody asked that I show what version of FreeCAD I'm using. So it's uh, 0.19. This is one of the latest builds. I just downloaded it just to see what was new in there. If you're not using 0.19, you're still using 0.18. I thoroughly recommend downloading 0.19 and getting the latest version um, because there's some great uh, new features and some fixes in there too. Okay. So as usual, I'm going to run this macro. This is my macro for starting up. What it will do is it just fires up, creates a, a new job, and it, it puts in a new part, a new body, creates a sketch on the XY plane, and then it asks me to save that sketch. So I'm going to save it as um, electronics. box and save that now I want to just let you know that I'm using this new thing here that shows you what I'm typing over on the left here also highlights my mouse and if I click you'll see that it highlights which button I'm pressing so that's my left button that's my right button and that's my scroll wheel and that's what happens when I move my scroll wheel so um, I am going to move my scroll wheel right now because I want to zoom out a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the box. We know the rough box shape, so we're going to select a box and we're going to create that shape. And we know that that box should have some radii. So we're going to put the radii on the corners. And that's basically the outside shape of the box so it has a radius in each corner and we know that we have um, we want it to be symmetrical around this center point so we're going to do that next so I am going to select that point and that point the center point it did not get the center point hold on one second that point that point and center point there we go and I'm going to tell it that it's um, symmetrical around there now what i'm going to do is select holding the control i'm going to select that radius that radius that radius and that radius and tell them they're all equal because that's the way our box is going to look and then finally we need to put some dimensions on so we want a dimension for this radius and I'm just going to let it be whatever it says it is right now. And then we're going to create a spreadsheet after this. So let's just go ahead. The outside dimension. It's important that we go to this point and not this point because we want to be the outside dimensions. So that's our that's our length. Um, I just didn't get the point. There you go. We're on the point. We're on the point. Say OK. And then we're going to do a horizontal or a vertical dimension. And we grab the wrong point, so I'm going to cancel that one. I send it to the wrong point, that point, and that point. Say OK. Pull those dimensions out. And like I said, I'm just going to let those dimensions just be. All I wanted to do was constrain the shape. I'm going to close that. I'm going to create a pad out of that. I'm going to hit that guy so it's in the middle. And I'm going to make my pad 15 for now. That's because, and there we have the basic shape. So you can see the basic shape of the box. And 
what we want to do now is to create some some dimensions in a spreadsheet so that we can start setting up the box the way that we want it. So to do a spreadsheet, we just go into the spreadsheet workbench and we create a new spreadsheet and we can tile that spreadsheet so that we can see alongside here. And then from the sketch that I showed you before, um, we know roughly what dimensions we want to put in here and how we're going to get to them. So the first one that we have is the box length. Then we have the box width. Then we have the box height. Then we have the outside radius. There's going to be an inside radius. There's going to be a box wall thickness. And I'll just move that across there. And there's going to be a hole diameter. And a lug height. Got a spell. And the lug radius. And there's going to be the whole center across the length, the whole center across the width. And there's going to be, there's going to be a box inside length, which we can calculate. And a box inside width. And we can calculate some of those. So the first things we're going to do is we're going to just have some arbitrary numbers. So we're going to say the box is going to be 200 long. It's going to be 150 wide, and we're going to say the height of the box will be 75, and the wall thickness will say it'll be 4, and that whole diameter we're going to say is 6, and everything else we can calculate. Yeah, all the rest of these we're going to calculate. So the outside radius is going to be equal to so it's going to equal the wall thickness which is b7 plus 2 and then the inside radius is going to equal the outside radius which is b5 minus the box wall thickness which is b7 And the lug height, so the lug is that piece in the corner that has the screw in it, and that lug height is going to be the box height, which is B4, minus the box wall thickness, which is B7, times 2. And then the lug radius is going to be the whole diameter, which is B8 times 2.5. The whole center length is going to be the inside length, which is, oh, we need to calculate that first. So the inside length is going to be the box length says B2 minus 2 times the wall thickness says so B7 times 2. And then the box inside width is going to be the box width, which is B3 
minus two times the wall thickness, which is B7 times two. And then the whole center length is going to be the inside length divided by two. So that's going to be B13 divided by two minus the whole diameter, which is B8. And then the whole center width is going to be the inside width, which is B14 minus B8. So that should give us some sensible dimensions. Now what we're going to do is select all these and run that macro that I've showed you before. So this macro is called Easy Alias and you can download it from um, here. I'm going to show you where you can download it from the add-ons. So if you go into the add-ons and then you can download macros And you'll see it listed as easy alias. So it's down, mine's downloading it right now, but I'm not going to do all that on this video, but just to show you where you get it from. So um, I'm going to close that and I'm going to run this macro. I have it in my recents because I just ran it. And when I do that, it makes these aliases. So if I click on here, you can see whatever's in this left is now the alias for this amount. Okay, great. So we have the spreadsheet all set up. And we're going to leave the spreadsheet open because we can continue to um, add or remove or change things as we go along. Okay, going back to the part design workbench. Let's go back to our model list. Go back to our sketch. Now we can modify this sketch. So I'm going to double click on this guy. Click on that little guy there, and I'm going to tell it that it is spreadsheet, which is what our spreadsheet's called, and it's box underscore length. So there we have it, and you can see it's that dimension. So the 200 there, it's 200 there. When I click OK, it's going to change that to 200. And notice how this dimension now turns orange. That just shows you that it's set up to be referencing something. And I'm going to edit this one. So that's a double click. I'm going to click that guy. I'm going to bring this guy over here. Spreadsheet dot box width. There we go. And say OK. So now you can see I've got that height, that width, and then this radius, which is my outside radius. We'll go here. Again, spreadsheet, outside radius. Say OK. OK. And now I have everything per this guy here so I'll close that and we can quickly see that if I change this to 250 we're already um, parametric so the other one we want to do is set this box height so that box height when we go into the pad the pad length is going to be um, Spreadsheet box height and say OK. So now my box is that height, that width, that length. And whatever I put in there is what will change. It also has this outside radius, so whatever I change for that. Now, one thing I do like to do is 
we're going to put a third column in here. So wherever I've calculated an amount, I don't want to manually change that. So I'm going to type calculated and I'm going to copy that. And so this one, if I click on it, I can see there's a calculation there. So I know that that's calculated. The wall thickness is not calculated. The hole diameter is not calculated. The lug height is calculated. The lug radius is calculated. The whole centers are calculated. And the inside length is calculated and the inside width is calculated. Okay. So now I can see which fields I can modify or I should modify. Um, and that will tell me uh, or will remind me not to change the ones that I've already calculated. So what do we want to do now? We got we got a cube with some radiuses on it, but we need to have a hollow inside. So how do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to create a new sketch. And again, we're going to create it on the XY plane. I'll say OK. And on this one, I'm going to use this guy here, which, which says, um, show me a sectional view of my block. So when I do that, I'll be able to see the sketch superimposed here. So if I draw this sketch now, if I draw this guy here, you can't see it, but if I press that, you'll be able to see it because now I'm looking at a sectional view. So if I rotate that, I'm only looking at a tiny piece of that cube. Okay, so this is basically the same sketch. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put the radii on here. It's all the same kind of constraints. So we should just be able to do our symmetry constraint. You have to make sure that it gets that inside. So I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so you can see. So you gotta get those points, that point and that point at that point I don't want to get this line I want to get that point and then hit symmetry and that means it's symmetrical this way and that way so everything looks good and then again we're going to select all our radii I don't know why they come out at all different sizes either I think it's where you select on the line but it doesn't really matter because we're going to fix them all so they're all even and we're going to dimension a radii and this one we can actually dimension it because we already know it's called inside radius. So we're going to call it spreadsheet dot inside radius. Say OK. Boom. And now we have to be just a little bit careful that we select the right point. So we're going to select this point and select this point and this is going to be our inside length so we're going to say spreadsheet inside length says so box inside length okay and you can see that that box inside length is 242 and that's what that is there so it's okay and now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it on the outside end so this is a vertical dimension it's got that guy and that guy and spreadsheet i'd start typing inside and it'll pop pop this up so box inside width say okay and there we go so now, if we look carefully, we have our box dimensioned and our, it's constrained and all our dimensions are per our spreadsheet. And these are all calculated dimensions. Okay, so now we say close. Now we turn that into a pocket. And pocket didn't do anything, but we're going to say go through all and reversed. And then we're going to say OK. All right.
now we have a block with a big hole in it now remember what happened was i started my dimensions on the same xy plane so if i do that and i create a pocket it's going to go all the way through so to fix that what we're going to do is we go back to our original sketch and we just change our attachment and so we go so we're on the sketch we go to attachment we say position and we're going to make this position we're going to we're going to make it spreadsheet dot wall dot box wall thickness but we're going to have it be minus when we say OK, and we tab off there, now it puts our bottom back in. So now we have the bottom of the box. And one thing a couple of people reminded me in comments is save your work. So let's save it again. Make sure we've saved everything. I'm going to save the spreadsheet. Make sure everything is saved. OK, so now we have a box box should be um, parametric so I should be able to change the wall thickness simply and that will change everything to suit and we have a constant wall thickness so our, our base is the same thickness as our walls on this guy and now we need to do is to create our lugs in the corners for each uh, corner we want the exact same lug so let's do that and we're going to create a new sketch once again this sketch is going to be on the XY plane Say OK and we're going to put it in that same view that we had before and we are just going to rough out the shape so the shape is going to be something like that and something like that and then with a radius it starts there goes to that point goes around to that point and then we have a hole in the middle it's going to be something like that okay then we can start dimensioning so one thing we know is that we can constrain a diameter so we're going to constrain this diameter and we have that over here so it's the whole diameter so that's going to be spreadsheet the whole diameter and we're going to zoom in there a little bit and then we can pull that up a little bit so we can see that and then we're going to go back to our radius constraint we're going to constrain this one and we know this is the lug radius so we're going to go spreadsheet dot lug radius say okay and so that gives us the lug radius is somewhere um, proportional to our diameter there now we want to do a dimension that goes from Let's zoom in so you can see from the center of that to the top of that and that is going to be spreadsheet whole diameter so we're just going to make it the same whole diameter dimension and then the same from horizontal dimension from there back to that point and we're going to call that spreadsheet the whole diameter and what that does is it positions this hole relative to that point so it's always in the same place so now we have the lug dimension but we need to position it and to do that what we're going to do is bring that so you can see the whole thing we're going to dimension from this point to the center of the hole because that's the important point that goes here we can also use that dimension when we're creating a lid if you want to create a lid um, 
Let me just tidy up my dimensions here so they're out of the way. This is just purely for visual so we can see what we're doing. All right, now we're going to do a horizontal dimension. It's going to go from that center point and it's going to go to that center point there. And that is going to be our whole center length. So spreadsheet dot whole center length. Say OK. And notice that it moves the whole thing because we, we dimensioned everything relatively from this center of this hole out to these edges. So when we move the center of the hole over, that edge has to move over because there's a dimension that pushes it over that way too. So let's move that dimension up there so it's out of our way. Now we're going to do the vertical one again from that center point over to this center point. And we're going to call that the whole center width spreadsheet whole center width and now if we look now now <laughs> now we must have made a mistake on our whole center width so let's have a look at what we've done here. If I go here, our whole center width should be the inside width. Box inside width minus B8. Let's see what we've done. They can't be right because that one, no, oh, whole center width divided by two minus B8. Boop. And now if we go over here, there we go. So I just had to click on that dimension to make it update. And there it is. So you can see our lug is right in the corner of that. And it is in there no matter what size that box is. So we're going to close that. And now we want to pad that guy. And we are going to pad it by the lug height. We remember that is calculated as well. So let's go ahead and make pad. We're going to say spreadsheet dot lug height. Say OK. Say OK. So the way I designed it is that's always one wall thickness down from that surface. So that when we do a lid, we can do a lid with a um, an embossment that centralizes the lid and comes down to the top of those lugs. That's the uh, the design I'll show you that at the end I've actually done the lid um, so you'll be able to see it uh, but I'm not going to do it in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you to do it and then you can show me what you've done we'll take a look at how you get to where you you get to with a lid um, one thing I will tell you with the lid is you want to put on obviously a clearance hole and a chamfer on that hole so we can add those to the spreadsheet later on so now let's see we only have one lug, so we could go in and create the same sketch on this side and the same sketch on this side and the same sketch on this side um, to create that, but there is a better way. So I can select that lug and I can do this. And this may be something that is only in version 0.19. So if you have 0.18, you may not have the create a multi transform feature. So I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember seeing it in 1.8, but I haven't used 1.8 for a while. So what you do is basically I selected the front of that pad. So the pad is in. Then I right click here and I'm going to add a mirrored transformation. And I'm going to tell it where that mirrored transformation is. And I'm going to say, okay, 
and now you can see I have two pads. I don't have four pads yet, so I only have two. Well, I'm going to go back in here. This time I do a mirror transformation, but I'm going to do it on the horizontal sketch axis and say OK and OK. And now if you look, boom, we have four beautiful lugs. And those lugs are parametric. So what's going to happen is when we change the size of this box, change our length now to 120 and change our box width to 80. You can see that my lugs all stay the same and I can change my wall thickness to let's say six and you'll see that my lugs change there and let's just do something a bit different with this make it a square box so there and then I can also change this whole diameter so if I made that whole diameter uh, four You'll see the lugs get smaller because you don't need as much material on there. And let's see what else we can do here. So I can change um, my box height and everything changes. So you can see that box is completely parametric these are quite useful for if you're doing if you want a 3d print box and use it as an enclosure for some electronics so i've been doing some some things with arduinos and um, various uh, raspberry pis etc and you can take this as the basic box and then cut the holes in that you need so that you can house the electronics and here's the final version with a lid on it and I made the lid so that is also parametric. There are the holes all lining up. And it has a little detent in the bottom that lines up into the hole and makes for a lid that closes on the box. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more of these videos. Thanks for watching.